Hi, this is a review on the Ninja hot and cold brood system. Two ways to enjoy over ice, coffee and tea. Let's see what else it's got here. Fresh 10 minute cold brood designed to brew over ice at an accelerated lower temp. Hot brood on demand. And it does all these different things. So what led me to this coffee pot was I bought this Cuisinart. I uh, just got done doing a review on this Cuisinart. It's horrible. I'm sending it back. I know my coffee area looks kind of crazy because <laughs> I have all these coffee pots. I also have a uh, a Hamilton flex brew this coffee pot amazing if you just want simple you know K cup or you want basket to brew your own coffee and able to make a full pot if you want to without a bunch of bells and whistles this thing is great I know I'm not doing a review on this right now but I gotta give this thing credit I've had this for quite a while and it has never failed me. But anyway, back to my mess over here. All right, so I determined that this one, piece of junk, sending it back. If you wanna see why, watch the review. Anyway, so I ordered this one right away after because I want iced coffee. It's summer, it's hot. So, let's start out with the filter basket. So, this is kind of interesting on here because you see how it has this little orange leaf thing. I like that it pulls out like that. It has the little, it's kind of wet because I just washed it out. I just made coffee. But, you know, it has a permanent filter basket in here. You can use paper filters with it as well if you'd like to. And then you just put it back in. It has an on off button right here. So if I turn it on. Now you can see that it says coffee, which some people may say, okay, well that's kind of stupid. I know it's coffee, but here we go. If you take this filter basket out, you have another filter basket for tea. This little thing in here pops out. I'm not, um, well, I guess I will pop it out. Anyway, you take this little filter thingy in here and it just goes inside there and snaps in. Now, if you got a coffee drinker and a tea drinker in the house, then this is the perfect coffee pot. Close that up, and oh, now it says T. So now we know what's going on. So since I got the T filter in there, let's start with that. So as you see, there's a little T leaf down here that's green. Okay, so there's so many features on this, I don't even know where to start. Okay, so let's okay, let's go over this dial right here. So we have um, a mug, an extra large mug. Your travel mug and an extra large travel mug you have a half a pot and a full pot okay there isn't really a way to make anything in between a half a pot and a full pot which is fine with me because a half a pot usually works for what I need and then if I want a full pot then that's cool too um, but since we're on the tea what you would do uh, once you got the tea basket in there and it says T. You're going to choose what size cup you want. So let's say we want to make a extra large mug of tea. Now down here, this dial is what you use to select. So right now, it's selecting the coffee side. So you'd have to push this little T button right here. And now it switches to this side. So there's herbal, there's black, there's oolong, white, and green. And each of these teas brew at a different temperature for the type of tea it is, which I like that. 
Um, I do drink tea as well as coffee. Um, I drink a lot of black tea and green tea. Some herbal tea. I mean, I have, you know, a variety of different teas and, and stuff. You can throw in uh, tea bags or loose leaf tea. Doesn't matter. Takes both. So I really enjoy that feature. So if you have a coffee and a tea drinker at home, then this would be perfect. So we're gonna pull that back out. We're gonna take this tea basket out and put the coffee one back in. I like that this pulls out to the front as well. So now that it says coffee again, same thing applies. You choose what you're gonna make. But now the dial, you don't see the tea options anymore. So this we have the specialty coffee, we have the classic, we have rich or bold, whichever. Some coffee pots say bold, this one says rich. Um, the over ice, which is the one I use right now all the time, and the cold brew. The cold brew is nice. It takes about 10 minutes, but it does taste good. The specialty would be, you know, it's not espresso, but it's close as you're going to get. You also have down here a clean button. This is to power it on and off if you want to power it on and off. It has a, um, a stay warm button. It has a delay brew, so you can program it to go off whatever time you want. And this button right here that is a no drip button so say you're making a full pot of coffee but you can't wait because you're impatient you just hit the no drip button pour yourself a cup of coffee and then yeah push the button again and it, it immediately stops dripping which is nice so this has its own kind of pitfalls too as well I mean I guess there I've been on the search for the perfect coffee pot and I don't think there is any really such thing but this is pretty close for me it did have a lot of bad reviews so far I've been using it for I don't know a few days now and I haven't had any problems with it so far so good the water reservoir is nice um, and the water reservoir is for both the the carafe side and the single cup and it is really easy to refill it and I just have a uh, Brita Slim filtered water and actually this is the five cup one so when this is full it'll fill my reservoir up um, to the top and this is going to be the max line so I'm going to add some water to this I don't know I'm trying to do this with my phone and uh, Yeah. Let's fill this up. It also comes out really easy, so I mean, you could fill it up in your sink. It suggests that you use filtered water for it. So if you have hard water at home, I wouldn't use tap water. Um, but if you have filtered water at your house, it's really easy just to, you know, pop this thing out and uh, fill it in the sink can't see it now because I got this monster coffee pot that does nothing for me uh, it does have I'm gonna let me turn it around here okay so on the side it's really hard to see and now I can't find it at all anyway there are markings <laughs> if I hold it at a certain angle you might be able to see it right now but it'll tell you how much water for like a travel mug or a regular mug um, or like a full pot. So there are little pictures on there, but right now because it's clear, you can't really see that too well. But I don't care because I just fill it up all the way. Um, so as far as that goes, that that's easy to work with. So the other thing I, I don't like about this, I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but um, is when you want to make a single cup of coffee, you got to take this out and figure out somewhere to put it where it's not going to get broke. Um, that pops down for your cups. 
So I could take, you know, cup size, stick it there. And it's still, you know, it could take a pretty good size cup. The nice thing is when you're using the options, now that I can't see them, when you're using the cup options, where did they go? Oh, there they are. Sorry, my bad. When you're using the cup options, so say you want to do the two travel mugs. Um, let me grab my cup right here. I already made coffee, but um, when I take, no, actually, my bad. That one doesn't fit. Okay. So let's say I want to take my travel mug. I could put it here. And this does not get hot when you're using the cup options on here. It only gets hot when you're doing a half pot or a full pot, which is nice. So this is where I make my iced coffee. It's great. So you can choose, you know, the classic rich over ice, which I'm going to choose over ice. So we are going to see how this works out. Also, I'm going to remove this gigantic box off my counter now that you've seen this, if I can. Okay. So, on the side here, you have a frother, which is pretty cool. So, if you want to make specialty coffees, you can. I love that it has the scoop that attaches to the side. So, on the scoop, you can see a picture. Half a pot, three to four scoops. Full pot, four to six. Specialty, two scoops. Then, on the cup side... It's a smaller scoop. You can see the mug sizes, two to three scoops, or the two travel mug sizes, three to five scoops. So you have to adjust that to figure out, you know, what strength of coffee that you would like. On the back is the tea measurements. So if you're doing loose leaf tea, you're going to do one scoop for the regular cup. Um, I'm guessing that's both the mug or cup. For a travel mug one to two scoops and then you got your half pot and your full pot so that's really handy and it's nice that it just sticks right here and i don't really have to mess with it um let's see what should i start with here um my dog's barking sorry my husband just got home and they think he's a burglar so anyway i am going to let's start with getting some ice here and you know what? I'm going to do this. And I'm taking you all over my kitchen here. You can look at my cabinets. Oh, God. All right. I usually like brew my coffee in this thing right here. Um, because this glass seems to be the perfect size. So I'm going to fill this up three quarters of the way full. Fill it up probably on this cup that I'm using all the way. Alright, so we're gonna go with that full. There's my little dog, he's a little protector anyway. So got my coffee cup ready. I have my coffee basket in. I'm gonna get my filter out. Now I got my my scooper. And right here, I have some coffee that I just ground recently. Let's see if I can open it with one hand. I think I can. I think I can. All right. So, I'm going to do, let's see. So, travel mug. Let's get it focused. Three to five scoops. So, normally, I use about three scoops for this size cup. Um, and the over ice. So I'm going to do just three scoops in here. I'm doing like a little bit, you know, bigger than a flat scoop, which is fine. You don't have to be exact science here. It's, it's coffee. All right. So now I just want to select, let's say it wasn't on there. I want to select what size I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go with that size travel mug instead of the extra large. And I'm going to choose over ice. 
and then I'm just going to hit the start button and we are going to wait also has a progress line right here um, this tells you kind of where it's at in the brewing cycle and what's weird I don't know if you'll be able to see this once it gets starting this thing does something it may have already did it but it moves like it squeezes shut or something yeah, let's see I think it may have already did it or maybe it does it when it starts to brew I'm not sure but I notice it when it does it on the T so let's see what's the progress line at right now oh it's getting there and on the T function when it's doing the T it's kind of neat because it kind of steeps the T in there for a little bit not not very long but before it starts coming out into the cup and now it's thinking it's thinking And then I think soon here, this thing's gonna do something. Maybe not, I could be lying. So on the over ice, I'm not sure why it takes a little bit longer to start. Oh, oh it did it. Anyway, this thing like, uh, we missed it, but it moved in and closed up, like clamped together. So it like made a seal. And now, it is starting, gonna start to brew any time now. And normally when I make iced coffee, I'd put my creamer in there and maybe like, you know, you might wanna do like a syrup or something. I like the caramel syrup. So I'll do a little bit of caramel syrup and creamer in there and then um, have my ice in the cup and let it brew but then I end up pouring this cup into my other travel mug because my other travel mug is taller and then I can add some more ice to it it does brew at a lower temperature when you're doing over ice I think it's like 110 degrees but you still have some ice left over once it's done so that way when I do pour it into my bigger travel mug, I can just add some more ice if I want. You don't really need to, but I like lots of ice. The progress bar is getting towards the end. And yes, it looks like we haven't really got any coffee yet, but it seems like it comes out all towards the end. So, here it goes. Now I could have done the extra large because you'll see this is a thing is that you have to play with the size cups that you have to kind of get an idea. Um, I think the, the small mug size on here, they're actually big cup sizes, so the small mug on here is about 9.5 ounces. The extra large mug is a little over 11 ounces. The travel mug, I'm not sure, I'll have to look at my paper, I wrote it down so that I could see um, what the sizes were so I didn't overflow. But as you can see, I mean, it's not too full, which is kind of nice because I haven't added any creamer or anything to it. If you wanted to take it out right now, you could hit the, the stop drip thing. Um, but when it's done, this bar will go solid. It'll beep and it'll say end up here, which means it's done. It's technically done right now, but it's still dripping, so I usually am just patient and I wait for the end thing to go on because a few more seconds isn't going to kill me. Maybe. Oh, and now see the filter, that noise you just heard was it releasing that suction it had, which I'm not sure exactly what that does. So now it's done. So now I have my nice iced coffee that I can add my cream and it has as you can see quite a bit of ice left still 
So if I pour it into my other mug, I can either add more ice into this cup or I can pour it into my other mug, add more ice, and still have room for my creamer as well. Um, so far, I, I there's nothing really that I don't like about this coffee pot. So I think if it continues working as it does, it's a keeper. Um, I still want to mess around with the specialty brews and stuff and try the milk frother. Haven't used the milk frother yet, but I will be getting to that. And uh, I think that's about it on this. Can't think of it. Oh, there's a the keep warm again. I told you. So yeah. So this plate right here is not hot at all, which is nice because I can do my travel mug. Also, another thing, there are two. Two versions of this coffee pot. One comes with the glass um, craft, and one comes with the stainless steel insulated one. So because this one that I have has the glass, this does get warm when you make a half a pot or a full pot, and you can do the stay warm feature on it. If you get the one with the stainless steel pot, it is this is not going to get hot. Um, because it obviously it can't heat through the stainless steel craft to keep it warm. The craft is made to keep it warm itself. So, but uh, I think I would prefer though to have the stainless steel one. So I may be ordering. Um, I don't know if I'm. See, that's the tricky part too. The thing is, if you get the glass one, okay, this part gets hot. So I'm not sure what happens if I just buy a stainless steel craft, if that's going to affect the craft with this getting hot. I'm not sure. So I think before you buy it, make sure you know which one you want. Some people say on the reviews that the stainless steel craft doesn't really keep your coffee, you know, very hot because it's not a tight seal. So I thought about maybe just getting, you know, one on the side and then I can pour my coffee into it and I can take it outside and, you know, still brew it in the glass thing. So I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. Also, what's really nice, I want to show you. Um, I did make coffee this morning and as you can see, there's a little bit of like, I don't know, it's like a powder, not powder, maybe because I, you can see it up here. Maybe I used two, I don't know. I honestly don't know why that's like that, but I'm gonna try to figure out how to get this thing off so I can show you this. It's hard to do, one-handed. Okay, what I like about this is this tube right here because the coffee, when you're brewing it, it's coming down through that tube, so it's going down into the coffee, which is bringing some of the coffee up from the top or from the bottom up. So it kind of mixes it better in there, which I like that. So that's another plus for for the craft. Um, I can't think of anything else on here, but it is a decent coffee pot. I like it, it's really easy to work with. If you have a combination of coffee and tea drinkers at home, then this would be perfect, you know? The only other thing is you got this other thing that you got to figure out where to put it. So I just kind of set it on top. I mean, it looks like crap sitting there, but, you know, I don't know where else to put it right now. <laughs> uh, that's an easy reach. So, but most of the time I drink coffee, so I'm not too worried about where I put that. Anyway, if you have any questions, just leave in the comments below. And if you like the video, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to see the video on the Cuisinart, uh, that's there too. I just finished that right before I did this one. And I'm going to ship that Cuisinart back today. And if I find anything else new with this one or it starts having problems, I will definitely update my uh, video let you know how things are going with it so anyway i hope you all have a great weekend and see you soon